Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give God some glory in the house. Hallelujah. How do you know that he's worthy to be praised? Hallelujah. Did he wake you up this morning? Did he give you the activities of your limbs? You ought to be able to stand to your feet and give God some glory. How about saying hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How about lifting up his name on this morning? The name of the Lord. Welcome you to the House of Love Ministries, where our Pastor Matt and Mandy Johnson are our leaders. We thank you for joining us. You could have joined anywhere, and you chose the House of Love to be in on today. And we want to give you thanks on this morning. And we want to let you know that this is the year of the documented proof. You are the evidence that God lives, and he abides, and he still is working miracles. You are the documented proof on today. We are the evidence yes, God. that our God lives. Yes. Our God is not dead. He is yet alive. Yes. You are the documented proof that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we can even ask or think. It's according to the power that worketh in us. Why don't you give God some glory on this morning? If you have prayer requests, go ahead and jot your prayer request down because we're going before the Lord right now. God, we thank you for your loving kindness and your tender mercies. We thank you because this is the day which you have made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you for our lying down on last night. We thank you for our life on this morning. When we woke up this morning, we had the activities of our lives for that alone we come to give you glory. You breathe the breath of Zoe into us this morning and we became living so God we thank you. You didn't have to do it but you did. Someone slept on but God you woke us up and you called us by our name. And we thank you on this morning. We didn't sleep on Father. We thank you that we rose Father. Despite what was going on in our life we rose this morning and we thank you dear Heavenly because your mercies are new to us on this day. We thank you for this day we've never witnessed to see before. We thank you for the activities of our limbs and the voice to speak of your goodness. You are such a good, good God. You're such a good, good father. You're such a good, good Jehovah Jireh. You're our Jehovah Nisi. You're our Jehovah Shalom. And we thank you because you are the peace that surpasses all understanding that keeps our hearts and our minds stayed on you. Father, we thank you on this day. We thank you that things are as well as they are with us on today. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, that you covered us by your blood, Father. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Now, God, we ask that you touch that man, that woman, that boy, that girl, Father, that is suffering with yes. the COVID thanks, the COVID virus on today. Father, we know that there's absolutely nothing too hard for you. So, God, we ask that you go in them to those homes and we ask that you do what only you can do and that's touch from the crown of their head down to the sole of their feet. Let your healing virtue permeate their entire bodies in your matchless name. Father, we ask that you look down upon Joshua's cousin, Father, that is on a transplant list. God, we know that there's nothing too hard for you. Look down upon Brother Kelvin and his, and his wife and his family, God. We know that there's nothing too hard for you. Look down upon Ashley Barricade on today. There was nothing too hard for you, God. We ask that you touch right now because if you touch us, we'll be touched. If you keep us, we'll be kept. So, God, we ask that you touch, heal, to the homes, from the top to the bottom, the front to the back. In your name, Jesus. And let your healing virtue just go through that home, God. Touch that man, that woman, Father, that thinks that there's no hope. They may be looking for jobs. They may need a financial need 
to be met. They may be in need of a transportation. There is nothing too hard for you, God. So, God, we ask that you touch them right now because they are going to be the documented proof, the evidence that you are a way maker. You are a miracle worker. You are a promise keeper. You are a light in the dark places of their lives. Every dark place, Father, you are the light. And we thank you on today, God. In your mighty name, Father. Yes, God. We ask that you lead and move right, right now, God. Yes. In your matchless name. That man, that woman, Father, that is suffering from a mental breakdown. God, there's nothing too hard for you. Mental instability. There is nothing too hard for you, Father. In your matchless name. Let them know, Father, there is yet hope because we serve a true and a risen Savior on today that will supply all our needs according to the riches and glory. And, Father, allow us, Father, teach us how to take the limits off of you. Whose report will you believe? Will you believe the report of the Lord? My God, my God, my God. Father, touch those children. Hallelujah, Jesus. That have been subject to sex trafficking, Father. The pedophiles, Father. The molestation. God, I ask that you touch right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Put a hope, Father, to the enemy, Father. Yes. Working on the inside of them, God. In your mighty name, Jesus. Father, I ask that you touch. Yes, 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 yes. In your matchless name, touch prophetess Mandy, touch her in her body, from the crown of her head down to the sole of her feet, Father. I ask that you bring healing to her body, to her lungs, Father, every facet of her being. Yes. And keep her covered by your blood. Oh, yes, God. Oh, yes. your baby. In your matchless name, God. Oh, yes. There is simply none like you in all the earth. Oh, yes. Father, we ask that you look down upon every apostle, yes. every bishop, every pastor, every evangelist, every elder, every prophetess, Father, that is declaring your word, that is preaching your unadulterated gospel. Touch them right now. Encourage their hearts, Father. Strengthen them where they're weak and build them up where they're pouring down. Bless them going out and they're coming in. Oh, yes. In your matchless name, oh, Lord. Lord. Continue to give them a vision for your people. In your matchless name, God. Now, God, we ask that you lift up the bowed down heads. Encourage the discouraged. In your mighty name, there is nothing too hard for you. Abraham said, is there anything too hard for my God? There is nothing too hard for you, God. So we ask that you touch right now. In the name of Jesus, minister to them right where they are. Right where they are, minister to them, God. Do it, Lord. In your matchless Lord. name. Show them hope in what seems like a hopeless situation. Come on, yes. Hope. In your matchless name, Father. Hope, yes. Help them to believe your report. Not what they see, not what they hear, not what they've been told, but believe your report in your mighty name. Touch Mary Lee, Father. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, touch her in her body. Touch Atlan. We call her name out, Father. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. Remember Cleveland Clinic on today. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. Our CEO, Father. Yes. Yes. Touch In the name of Jesus. Yes. Each and every one that make Cleveland Clinic of what it is. Touch right now the supervisors, the managers, Father. Everyone in leadership. Touch them. Every employee. Touch right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. I want 
want to thank you, God, for opening up closed doors. Thank you for opening up closed doors. Hallelujah. Those businesses think that the door that is being shut. But God, you're able to open up the doors and allow the finances to come in, Father. That is needed to keep the doors open. Yes, yes, God. Do it, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. We love you, Father. Hallelujah. We appreciate you, Lord. We appreciate you, Lord. We appreciate you. We seek your face and not your hand. Because if we seek your face, Father, your hand comes along with us seeking your face. We're going to trust you even though we don't see you. We don't tra we can't trace you. We're going to trust you. We're going to trust you. We're going to trust you. In those dark places, Father. And those unimaginable places, we're going to trust you. Yeah. When it looks dark, when it looks dim, we're going to trust you. You said in your word, trust in the Lord with all our hearts. Lean not unto like our own understanding, but in all our ways to acknowledge you, and you shall direct our path. Yeah, that's your word. That's your we word. thank you for your word on today. We thank you for that peace that surpasses all understanding that keeps our hearts and our minds staying on you. Oh, yes. We thank oh, you. Yes. We thank you that things are as well as they are with us, Father. Glory to your name, Jesus. We can be homeless on today.
Lord, in this place. God, we thank you for your presence, oh God. We bless your name. God, we exalt you for you are worthy to be glorified. You are worthy to be lifted high, oh God. Father, we thank you, oh God, for your refreshing in this place. God, we thank you for what you are about to do as we come to lift you up.
victorious because he's alive, because he is arisen. Hallelujah. God, we worship you. God, we bless your name. For you have won the victory. Oh God, that you're changing lives, oh God, that you're real. 
Come on now, let's give God the glory. Come on, I'm going to let y'all stay in this vein right here. Come on, ain't no sense of moving from this place right here. We all got to get us some personal worship in, Brother Eddie. Come on, don't, don't leave out of here without getting yours in. Come on, God will always be where he feels welcome. So come on and love on him right now. Just a couple. 
couple more minutes. We gotta stay here. Come on, there's something God wants to do into us individually. Come on, let him minister to your mind. Let him minister to your heart. Let him minister to that broken place. Let him minister to that distracted place. Let him minister to that confused place. Let him minister to that hurt place. There it is, there it is, there it is. Come on, let him into that space that you closed up to everybody else. Come on, worship the Lord. Cry holy, holy, holy. There it is. Cry holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty. There it is. There it is. There it is. There it is. Don't let the mask, don't let life shut up your praise and your worship. You owe God. You owe God. The least you can do is get into his presence and love on him. And trust me, he's going to love you back. Who you are. 
my God, come on, say, my God, that is who you are. Come on, point to the sky. Say, my God, that is who you are. Has he kept any promises to you? Come on, has he kept any promises to you? Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I feel him in here right now. I see him in here most of all. I'm cognizant of the fact that his presence is in this place. We all got a need. We all got a desire. And he's able to meet you at your place of expectation. Come on, give him the glory. Come on, the devil is mad when worship goes forth. The devil is mad when worship goes forth. are destroyed. Burdens are lifted. Minds are regulated. Hearts are reconciled. In the presence of worship. Come on, there it is. Come on, tell them. Say hallelujah. Say glory to your name, Jesus. Cry holy, holy, holy. to do. There's something that God wants to do and that he is doing in the inside of each and every one of us, in our hearts, in our minds, in our spirits. He's working some things out, whether you can see it or not, that watch, you're going to be getting emails and phone calls and, 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 and pieces of mail and the U.S. postal mail about God work situations out, things that you're expecting. And I'm not selling you wolf tickets. This is just what God begins to do when you love on him and you place him of utmost priority, then he does place your business of utmost priority. He, ha he knows what you have need of. He knows what you have need of. He understands what it is that you stand in need of. Yes. And the need meter is here. But we got the first offer up, the sacrifice of praise and to worship him. The Bible says in spirit and in truth because he said the father is seeking such to worship him. For they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Y'all know what that mean? means? Your, your heart has to be in the right posture. Because worship and your praise is only accepted when your heart is in the right posture. And so if it's not in the right posture, that's when you get up into your prayer and worship God, realign my heart, create me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. He said, who can send, ascend into his holy hills or stand in his holy place but he that hath clean hands and a pure heart? But trust me, God works behind the scenes and he's working behind the scenes for each and every one of us. We, we can't afford to not be documented proof. We cannot afford to be, because last year was the year of Rehoboth, and God makes sure we walk that out. And God has already started showing himself faithful 
uh, as it relates to this being the year of documented proof. And so we want to make sure that we're in a place where we can take full advantage of what God has commissioned this year to be. Anybody in here want to be documented proof on a daily basis? We, we want to experience supernatural demonstrations, not just in our spiritual life, but in our mind and our emotions, in our money, in our business matters, in our educational efforts, whatever that we're, we're going to be doing. I want to experience the supernatural, the signs, the miracles and wonders, and not only y'all for it to happen to us. But for God to facilitate some signs, wonders, and miracles through us for the benefit of other people. My God. I told y'all before this year is all about being the documented proof. I, people need to be able to look at us and we be a reference point of what the kingdom of God looks like, Alexa, how the kingdom of God operates. They're supposed to be able to see the attitude of God, the character of God, the power of God just by observing your life. And so this year is going to be very critical because one of the things I've also been saying is, Brother Glenn, that we got to stop. I don't, I don't get excited about reading scriptures. I really don't because, I, because I, I'm a little upset because I say, okay, God, it's something I'm not doing because if the Bible tells us that he's no respecter of a person, why am I getting excited about what he's done for blind heart and mass? Why am I getting excited what he did for the lepers? We trying to pull this Jesus from the scriptures into our mouth. Because, because Brian Bartimaeus and them lepers been gone for thousands of years, but we here, and so we need to see that type of power in action in our now. And guess what? I'm not moving from this until every part of my life speaks Amen. that it is documented proof. Amen. My God. My God. But we thank God for his goodness. And I'm going to tell you, he, he, he's done a, a couple of good, big things already. But anything God does is big. I, you know, but I say that just, you know, I minimize sometimes. I say like, you know, major or minor. But anything, because God really don't have to do nothing for us. That's right. But God has done some wonderful things. And I always say, if, if I had any doubt that if God was real, you know, I, just by looking at you, this is evidence. We got to stop taking this lightly. Y'all know life ain't promised to us, right? That's right. That's That's, right. That, first, that right there shows you documented oh, proof that God is still alive, active, and working. Amen. Because somebody went to bed last night just like we did Amen. and thought they were going to get up and go to the grocery store, thought they were going to come to church, and they didn't cross all over into eternity. But we thank God right. for being documented proof that life is good and life is worth yes. living. Yes, yes. But God has already started doing with the, with the young man getting about the hospital bed. Amen. And then, you know, even, even something wonderful happened to me. I was, um, this is why I say <clears throat> our, our declarations and our decrees are so important and they're powerful. But check this out, y'all. It has to be coupled with strategic action. Yes. Because the Bible tells us that faith without works is dead, so we can decree and declare all day long. But if we're not doing something to accompany the decrees and the declarations, then guess what? We won't see anything happen. Amen. This is a partnership. It's not that you're taking over the place of God and the work of the Holy Spirit, but this is a partnership. And so I got an email. <clears throat> I went on and signed up for one of the scholarships. And so uh, they told me it was accepted. It was like a month and a half ago. And so I was like, okay, I had made my first payment, which was due before classes started. Uh, so that was on the 10th last Sunday. They went on, you know, they take that money quick. Um, but uh, I got a tag, an email, and it said, you've been approved for the senior pastor scholarship, and it has been applied to your account. Oh, uh, man, I start speaking in some tongues. I start giving God the glory. Listen, yeah. remember I told you the supernatural happens in every in different ways. Yeah. It, it, it can be major, it can be minor, it can be financial, it can be health, it can be family, it can be yeah. whatever. Yeah. But that 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 was my super, supernatural demonstration. Yeah. And so I thank God. And so guess what? As God begins to do things for you in your life, it's important that you have to share this because we have to know that if we're going to be preaching something, we have to be the evidence of what we're preaching. Many of us last year were the evidence of the year of Rehoboth. God has done some wonderful things, but we, we want to turn this up a notch and be the documented proof. So if somebody has, I, I want to know what God looks like. What is this kingdom that you speak about? They should be able to look, oh, I see. 
That's what the kingdom looks like. That's how the kingdom behaves. That's how the kingdom operates. When they look at your attitude, your body language, your facial expressions, your disposition, ah, that's what the kingdom of God. I want some of that kingdom. How do I get to it? And then that gives us the opportunity to show them, hey, you want some of this supernatural? Let me welcome you to the one that can give it to you. Yes. So today we're going to continue in our series titled, Show Me What You're Working With. Show me what you're working with. And we're in part four. <clears throat> and the subtitle for today is Giving That Unlocks. Giving. G-I-V-I-N-G. -I -I giving That Unlocks the Supernatural in Your Life. Giving That Unlocks the Supernatural in Your Life. And I'm going to give some text scriptures. So if you're taking notes, you can go ahead and jot them down. We're going to be diving at some point into 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12. Once again, that's 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12. Then we're going to Proverbs, no particular order. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. Once again, that's Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. Y'all know pastor is a word, man. I want to make sure y'all have proper and sufficient scriptures. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Once again, that's Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Make sure you take your notes. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Once again, that's Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. Then we have 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 3. And then we have Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. That's Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12. Welcome, Facebook family. Be sure that you have your Bible, you have a notebook, you have something to write with. It's important uh, that we write down notes because it is those notes when we apply them to our life from the word of God that we can experience growth and the supernatural can overtake us. Well, over the last few weeks, I've been working <clears throat> to build a foundation upon which, we, upon which we will stand this year and the years going forth because I want y'all to know something. This is not just the year of documented proof, but we want every year after this year to continue Amen. to be documented proof. Like, like just because we're in documented proof, y'all know God is still making room for us and this is still... Because this includes Rehoboth, right? You, you know that, right? When people see the doors opening, like, you know, Rehoboth, God has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. Like, being documented proof also includes that. And so, even when we leave this year, we, we don't want to leave Rehoboth or documented proof back. So this stuff, it continues to build on one another. But this foundation determines how much we can grow and expand. Your foundation indicates and dictates, I should say, how much you can grow and expand. If your foundation is faulty, you cannot do much growing or expanding. Even as it relates to construction, if a home is extravagant and sizable, but the foundation upon which it stands is unstable or has a crack in it, it will begin to adversely affect the quality of that home. So you can, you see them nice homes in the Las Olas area and in all the other beach areas? Listen, if the foundation is no good, guess what? It's going to begin to affect the value of that home. Why? Because the foundation is just that important. And I don't care what it seems like, how you're growing and climbing in life. If your foundation is not strong, it's going to affect the quality of your life. My, my. Such is the case when it comes to our life. Your foundation will ultimately again affect the construct of your house. And I ask you a question, are you building your life on sand? Unstable things. Is your foundation built on like sand? You know, you can't really get a good grip in. You, you know, you start sinking down in there. Or are you building your life upon the rock, which is the foundation of God's word and his principles? Because whether we know it or not, Sometimes we're building ourselves 
in our lives, Alexa, on, on temporal things, our, our careers and our educational pursuits. We build our lives on our money. We build our lives on our family, and that's not even good, all right? And we, we begin to do this, and then what we do, Brother Ezekiel, we begin to sprinkle a little Jesus in there and then say that we're building on a foundation of God's word. But no, if you're not truly building on his word and the principles of his word, whether you try to sprinkle a little bit of them in there between your, 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 your unstable foundation is still does not count. And so I challenge you to ask you, and this is for you to ask yourself, am I building on a foundation of God's word? You can't answer that from your mouth because your life is going to tell on you. We are believing this year to be one of supernatural demonstrations so that we can become documented proof that God is indeed an alive, active, and miracle working God. Our lives, as I keep saying, it should be a point of reference as to what the kingdom of God looks like, how it operates, and how it functions. When our lives truly reflect kingdom living, people are drawn to us. My God. When our lives truly reflect kingdom living, people are indeed drawn to us. Not because of us, but because of the God living on the inside of us that's being displayed through our attitudes, through our dispositions, through our body language, through how we respond to adversity, through how we treat and love on our enemies. That's how the kingdom of God comes forth. And that's how your light is supposed to be shining. This is why as born again believers, we must always be aware of ourselves so as to reflect kingdom principles. So we don't give room for our flesh to turn people away from the kingdom. Y'all hear what I said? They come home to church. <laughs> but we have to make sure because the time we decide to give folks a piece of our mind, the, the time we decide to let our flesh and our, and our words get the best of us, that could cost a soul that God was going to use you to bring into the kingdom or somebody that was shaky in the kingdom that God was going to use you to help replant them on a firm foundation. This is why you have to stay in a place of God Touch my heart, God, help my heart, help my thoughts, because why? We cannot afford, this is not about being perfect. But the Bible does tell us to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. But it doesn't mean perfect from without flaws, because we know in this flesh dwelleth no good thing. Perfection means maturity. Doing your best to strive to demonstrate the kingdom principles in your living. So it is not okay. When we have those, well, I just had to step in the fire and let them know what it is. I had to just give them a piece of, piece of my mind. It is never okay. Because I said you cannot be petty and a peacemaker. And so we have to make sure if we are, we have the first documented proof. This is what I've been saying, y'all. We have to make sure, Brother Eddie, that we are documented proof of God's character before we try to be documented proof of his power. People want the power of God. We just don't want the character of God. Come on now. But it's the character that's really going to draw folks. That's right. Over the last few weeks, we've talked about being documented proof of God's reality. And today I'm going to do a little bit more teaching. We talked about being documented proof of God's reality. Then we said, talked about being documented proof of God's touch. And then we went on to be talking about being documented proof of God's word. Today, we are going to deal with a topic that so many people in the kingdom fell at. But yet, it's an area that the Holy Scriptures consistently challenges us on. And the area I'm referring to is our giving. Please understand, no matter how much you fast... No matter how much you pray, no matter how much you read the Bible, no matter how much you trust God, there are certain supernatural doors that will only open in the presence of godly giving. Now, and so it's imperative that we dive into the scriptures because whenever you hear a lot of uh, messages and sermons on giving, it's a whole lot of folks giving you their mindset or giving you their thoughts and giving you what they feel and so forth. But no, 
we, we, we're going to dive into the scriptures to find out what it is the Bible says, all right, as it relates to giving. Because we are people of God, so we don't build on opinions, but we build on the word of God. Yes. Now, this is usually the, now let me, let me start here. For some reason, many people don't mind giving in every area except money. That is usually the biggest challenge for many people in the body of Christ. And I know there has been some men and women of God who has perverted the gospel when it comes to giving. They have played games and duped people out of money. They have ran all types of scams and schemes uh, that have come up. But guess what? God's word doesn't change just because people utilize it in the wrong way. Y'all get what I'm saying? God's word still says what it is regardless of how somebody else utilizes it. And so it is never an excuse of why we should honor the word all because they preach wrong and they hustle people. No, no, no. We're still bound by the word, whether or not they presented it the right way. This is why we have to hide the word in our hearts so that we don't sin against God. Now, just as we are trusting and believing God to reveal himself to us in a greater way this year. We are expecting him to do some dynamic and some wonderful things this year. He is also expecting us to grow and to mature in areas of our kingdom living that we've been immature in far too long. We have to remember that our relationship with God is a two-way two -way street. And so often our expectation of God is so high. But what we're willing to give to God, Brother Glenn, guess what? It's so low. But we have to remember, no, we can never beat God's giving. But God challenges us on the point of effort. What kind of effort are you making to prioritize your relationship with him? God, I'm expecting you to do this. God, I'm expecting you to do that. But yet at the same time, we refuse to grow and come up in the things that he requires of us. There are many people who say, well, I can't afford to give. But I say you can't afford not to give. No matter your income, bro, hear this. And this is a good time to check this out. You know, I got this from Dr. Ari Vernon. He told, he, well, he didn't tell me, but I felt he was telling me when I was reading his book. <laughs> He said, when you do right and your integrity is right, he said, preachers shouldn't mind having to talk about money. Is that right? Yeah. He said, now you should feel a little squirky if you know you're going to do some crazy stuff with it. But we want to get, get some good biblical teaching. Y'all know me by now. I like to present what the word says. And we want to dive into the word because I can talk to my face as blue. But if we don't have no word, but the word is what we need to get inside of us that's going to produce change. Oh, but. <clears throat> No matter your income bracket or financial situation, God's word does not change. God's word does not go based on our life situation. Say, oh, let me change my word for Brother Ezekiel. Mm -mm. Well, let me change my word for Pastor Matt because he's... Mm -mm. God's word is still what it is regardless of our life situation. So I'm going to repeat that again. No matter your income bracket... All right, or financial situation, God's word does not change. In fact, if we revisit a story in Mark chapter 12, because we're talking about giving that unlocks the supernatural, I'm going to show y'all in scripture. This is really true, y'all. I'm not, I'm not, y'all know pastor don't play no games, and I don't hustle. I, I give you the truth. But there are certain things, and I'm going to reiterate this again, that only giving can do. You can fast 50 days till your face turn blue. There are certain things that only your giving can unlock. In Luke, no, no, no. If we revisit the story in Mark chapter 12, verses 40, 41 through 44, that's Mark chapter 12, mm -hmm. verses 41 through 44. And then the same story is found in Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. That's Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. And then Luke chapter 21, verses 1 through 4. We see a story about people bringing their offerings to the treasury out of their abundance. But they're presenting a widow who put in two mites or the equivalent of a couple pennies today. Jesus didn't utilize this as a teacher moment to the crowd around him. He says, truly I say to you, this woman gave out of her livelihood. 
all right, all that she had. This wasn't to discredit, all right, the others who gave out of their abundance. Jesus is using this story to reinforce the point that I just made. No matter your income bracket or your financial situation, God expects you to still honor his word through your giving. You all know, and, and you can jot this down, you can say, my giving is an act of worship because it really is. This is one of the many ways that God challenges us to honor him. Relinquish the negative and the pessimistic ideas about giving so that you can make room for biblically sound teaching as it relates to giving. Pastor Johnson will never sell you any game or make you a promise to receive anything that the Bible does not authorize me to make. I'm not about to tell you to turn around three times and give $100 and, and your whole life is going to change. That's a lie because I, I can't say that because if that's not what the word is saying, I'm not going to sell you games. I can only give you the biblical principles. And I told you all this before. Check this out. Let me help you all with something. Miracles are a part of the word of God. We know that, right? Yeah. But if you always stand in need of a miracle, miracles come at critical times where there is nothing else to be done. That's by definition what a miracle is. But if every part of your life requires a miracle, then you are not living according to biblical principles. Come on now. And so I hear so often, many of us, nobody's excluded, because we've either said it before or said it now, and <clears throat> we always expecting God to do a miracle in our finances. Mm -hmm. And I'm asking, why do we always need a miracle in that area if we are following kingdom biblical principles. Come on. And so whatever, and begin to evaluate your life, because I know sometimes we say things out of routine, but I went back to my prayer time, this was a while ago, but I went, I said, God, why do I keep asking for miracles in every area of my life? I said, hold up, somewhere I'm not following your word because if I follow, because if we, if we say we need miracles, miracles are a part of the word, but that's not the only part of the word. All right, and so I said, God, if I'm if I'm sticking and lining up according to your word and implementing these things, your word works, so things should be happening. So that means because things are not happening, and I'm always asking for a miracle in every area of my life, that means I'm not living according to your word somewhere. Uh -huh. A lot of us grade our papers too high, y'all. Uh huh. We always tell God what we are doing. Why well, fasting? Not. No, you ask the Holy Ghost, what have I not been doing? On, and when you Lord. present it like that. Elder Fish, I'm telling you something. You'll be surprised what the Holy Ghost will show you about you. That's the truth. You'll be saying, but I've been serving you for 30 years. He showed you. Well, these have been the little holes in your worship here and where you've been falling. She'll be like, wow. This is why you don't lead to your own understanding, but in all your ways you acknowledge yes. him. And he going to put you back in line with reality. Yes. Now, the first scripture we're going to talk about, we're talking about giving Keep that in the back of your mind. Giving that unlocks the supernatural. Giving that unlocks the supernatural. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9 is what we're going to start at. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 9. I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version. Now it's time for the scripture. So make sure you document these. It says, honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. I'm going to read that again. Honor. This is an admonishment, a, a, a commissioning for you to do something. Honor the Lord with your wealth and with the first fruits of all your produce. This scripture first challenges us on the principle of honor. Can I just do some teaching today? Is that good? Yes. Go ahead. Because we, we need some good biblically sound teaching. The scripture first challenges us on the principle of honor. Honor means to display high respect or great esteem. It baffles me how in one breath we boldly profess that we know it's God that provides and enables us to earn a living. But yet when we earn that living, we leave God out the mix when it comes to how we utilize that living. Living means money. This proverb reminds us that our money is indeed an opportunity for us to honor the Lord. And you need to jot that in your notes. My, my money, how I handle my money is an opportunity 
for me to honor the Lord. It, 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 it will show you what you do with your money. It will show you just how much you honor God. We are then challenged on the principle of priority. The first principle that Proverbs 3 9 challenges us on is honor. The second one is priority. The fortunate thing is many people do indeed give. But the unfortunate thing is they give to God last. Uncle Sam takes his tithe and offering off the top for most of us before we get our check. But then we go shopping, pay bills, loan money, buy pleasurable things, take trips, and then we place $2 in the offering bucket at church and think God is pleased with that type of giving. There are standards of giving the scripture compels us to engage in. And according to this passage, those standards include honor and priority. And so you ask God, you ask God, let the Holy Ghost search you even right now. I do it to myself. I'm not exempt from none of this. I eat when I'm preaching. I eat when I'm prepping a sermon. So I get double the food. But I said, so even when I was prepping this yesterday, I said, God, show me. Not, oh, I've been sowing and I've been faithful. Show me what I have not been doing. That's how Pastor Johnson prays. Lord, show me what I have not. How have I not been honoring you? How have I not been prioritizing you? See, when we teach the word like this, see, Pastor Johnson will never be that pastor that get up here. Y'all know y'all need to give and get that will never be me. Because I figure if the word can uh, change your mind or help you, then nothing I say will. Come you know on, what I'm saying? See, pastors don't need to be doing all that. Come this on, house God. of love. This ain't a house of anger and madness. You know, yeah. <laughs> Amen. There are, again, there are standards of giving the scripture compels us to engage in. And according to this passage, again, that includes honor and priority. Will you honor God in your giving? Will you place him first on your list when it comes to the money that you bring in? Mm. And I promise you, based on the promises of the word of God, hear what I said. I promise you, based on the promises of the word of God, I promise you, Facebook family, based on the promises of the word of God. That when you prioritize God the correct way in your giving, he will provide for you in all situations and circumstances. Listen, y'all. God will never challenge us, challenge us to live according to his word and then he leave us hanging without seeing the fruit from living according to his word. My God. Check this out. I didn't say, now let me help y'all because I hear this by the spirit. I didn't say that challenges wouldn't come. Uh-huh. I didn't say adversity wouldn't present itself. I did, however, say that when you prioritize God, he will prioritize you even in the midst of those adversities and those problems in life that comes. Hallelujah. You're giving. Being faithful in your giving. Even when you honor God and prioritize God, that does not exclude you from the pains of life. Because that's just the result of the fall that happened in the book of Genesis. Come on now. But the promise that we have is that he's going to take care of those. His own. God, you got to point to yourself and say, God is going to take care of God me. Is God is going to take care of me in all situations and circumstances. And if you look at it, check this out. We wouldn't be here if that wasn't the truth. Now, verse 10 in Proverbs. We're still in Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 10 gives us the biblical result of when you honor and prioritize God in your giving. Uh -huh. So we talked about being challenged on honor and, the, and, and priority. Now we're about to see what happens when you do honor him and prioritize him. It says, then your barns will be filled with plenty and your bags will burst with new wine. This isn't Pastor Johnson's answer. This is the Bible's responses to your obedience to the conditions of your giving. It pretty much says you are going to be prosperous. Uh -huh. Now we got to be careful of how we define prosperous. Uh -huh. Because Alexa, when God opens doors and when you honor his word, we always think God is going to give everything back to us monetarily. Everything doesn't come monetarily. There have been times where I had bills that were due. Things were on the verge of disconnected and repossession. And then God said, send a letter in the mail, zero balance. I call, hey, no, you don't owe anything. We handle that. 
And so you don't know how God will work it out or, or what God would choose to do in your favor when you honor his Amen. word through this mode of giving. Amen. Amen. So as you see from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 challenges us. But verse 10 tells us when we, what's going to happen to us when we accept that challenge. Let's go to Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Luke chapter 6, verse 38, it says, and I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Read from whatever version you have because it's the same message, just different wording. Uh -huh. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use, yes. it will be measured back to you. We are challenged here in this passage in two ways. To not be stingy uh -huh. and giving just as you would like to receive. It is a common thing to find people's expectation to receive being very high. We, 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 we stand on, I can't wait to receive this, I'm looking to receive this, I'm looking to get this, and I'm looking to get that. But their willingness to give a lot of times is below their expectation to receive. Mm. Just as it is a common thing, again, when people are challenged in the area of money, uh -huh. it breeds a lot of times the spirit of reluctance. <laughs> the scripture admonishes us to give but then it reassures us that all our giving is never in vain because it will come back to us the powerful thing about this scripture is it's telling you it's challenging you when it said one word give and then the promise comes he said and it shall be given back to you so I, I promise you when you give in a godly way according to the promise of this scripture, it's going to come back to you. Yes. Now, but understand, all of this is a matter of a heart posture. Mm -hmm. If stinginess is at the root of your heart, you will operate from the realm and thus will need to seek God for deliverance oh, from that. Oh, because no. if, you, if you have a stingy heart, even when you give it, it does not honor God and God does not receive that type of giving because everything we offer to God must be from the correct heart posture, including your giving. Amen. Now, but when generosity is at the root of your heart, you will operate from that realm and will indeed experience a fulfillment of biblical promises. And so a lot of times we can save ourselves frustration. This is what I'm doing by way of giving you this teaching. Uh -huh. Like you can expect to receive what the Bible says you can have. Not what Pastor Johnson, but there is no power in this mouth if I'm not speaking from the word of God. And so this has caused a lot of people to become distraught because they've been told by preachers that you do. Now it's funny, but it's the truth. You, know, this, you turn around three times, you come down to this line and sold this thousand dollars. See, sow your rent money, and I promise come God. On. I'd have been there. I did it too. I've done that too. And, and, and that phone was still turned off. I've done that too. And, and the car was still taken. Done that too. Come on now. Because people, you have to keep an ear open for the word of God. And, and what, what's coming through people's mouth isn't matching up to the That's word right. of God. That's right. And so this type of teaching is going to help you save yourself some future frustration because you know you can only expect what the Bible promises. Yes, indeed. How you give, the attitudes, the dispositions, and the mindset behind your giving is what you can always expect to be given back. We forget, even when you give, you can give a thousand dollars. But when you give from the wrong heart or you give that thousand dollars grudgingly, when, when it's time for you to receive, you're going to be present. Have somebody ever gave, gave you something that was just presented to you like, here. Uh -huh. right. That make you not want it. Am I right in that? Exactly. But guess what? So, so sometimes we have to ask ourselves, instead of taking offense, okay, have I done that before now? It's my time to reap mm -hmm. from that type of being receptive. Mm -hmm. Like, when I say, drop a thousand dollars, I don't care if they had a mean look on the face. <laughs> Good luck. Now I get out my face. <laughs> so I'm going to spend this thousand dollars. <laughs> Little joke in there. <laughs> now, I hear so many people murmur and complain that they always get the end, short end of the stick. And if this is you, I challenge you to ask the Holy Ghost to reveal where you have been giving reluctantly. This is, this is a message that you have to allow into your heart. So if there's any places out of alignment for any of us, 
that the Holy Ghost can come in and realign. Because again, if we leave it to our own self, I'm going to always give myself an A. But see, I got to let the Holy Ghost search me and say, okay, just be open to what he shows me. Absolutely. Don't grade your paper too high. Let the Lord evaluate your giving. But one thing is for certain, you can never go wrong being a godly giver. Let me tell you, let me say that again. You can never go wrong being a godly giver. Now let's go on to Proverbs chapter 11, verse 25. It says, whoever brings blessings will be enriched. And one who waters himself will be watered. Uh -huh. Let me take some time here to interject this point to you. And I'm going to help some of y'all. There is no such thing as being taken advantage of when it comes to your giving. Come on now. I've heard so many people say, see, this is why I'm going to stop giving the people all together because folks just misuse you and take advantage of you. There is no such thing. Anytime you give out of a pure heart as unto God, that is counted in heaven as a seed that will always produce a harvest at some point. Uh -huh. So there is no such thing. I don't care what people have done and how they you thought they've taken advantage of your goodness uh -huh. and the kindness of your heart. Anything you've done is a seed. They're going to have to reap from what they've done, but you'll be able to reap from what you've done. And so I'm trying to get the body of Christ to take this type of stuff out of our lingo. Every seed you plant, even if they don't show gratitude, they don't say thank you. That is a seed that has been planted in the soil of heaven that's going to produce a harvest in your life. I'm telling you. Be delivered from letting people control you like that. Oh, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not take it. See, they, they can give me. No. God sees what you've done. And you will be rewarded according to the scriptures. <laughs> and I come to tell each and every one of you here today, don't let the foolishness of others stop you from being a giver. Because just as I mentioned in the beginning, there are certain supernatural demonstrations that will only happen by way of your giving. So don't stop giving. Use wisdom, yes, but don't stop giving. Come on, say, I won't stop giving, I will not stop giving. but I will use wisdom. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12. It reads, 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12, it reads, For if the readiness is there, it is acceptable. This is something Minister Frederick asked me about in one of the Bible studies. And this scripture was a perfect thing when I, I saw this. I believe I answered that for it. But it says, For if the readiness is there, it is acceptable according to what a person has. Not according to what they do not have. According to what you have. He holds you accountable based off of what he knows you have. Not according, you're not held. If you, if you can only give $10, you're not held according to the $1,000 standard that he's challenging that person on over there. Why? Because scripturally says, if the readiness is there, if the attitude, the willingness to give is there, you are then challenged to give according to the measure that you're able to. Not Judge according to what you don't have. Come on now. Now, you and God are always aware of what you are able to give. Uh -huh. And I'm going to tell you something. We don't, when, it, when the Bible says that God loves a cheerful giver, that's going to be our next one. I want to help you with something. Knowing that you're aware of what you're able to give and what, what God knows that we are all able to give, you have to stop shortchanging yourself saying, mm -hmm. like, if God knows you can give 500. Mm -hmm. And it's okay that we deal with money today. Yeah. Because this is the problem that we, a lot of us have. So if you get good, kind, loving teaching on this, this helps us. But if you, you, you can give 500, you know you can by way of your conscience, and you know that God knows you can give that as well. But you say, well, I'm going to just do $100, and I'm going to cheerfully give $100. That still does not honor God, and he still does not accept that giving. So you cannot use one scripture against another. Does that make sense? Because yeah. you know, we're, well, at least I gave this $100 cheerfully. But that wasn't your best. And so you cancel out that blessing. Absolutely. <laughs> Just as we have discussed above in our Luke passage, 
The measure to which you give is how you can expect to receive. There is another element at work in this passage of scripture with, with, with regards to readiness, which refers to your attitude. Keep your seed if your attitude is I give because I have to or I give because they are telling me to until God delivers you from that mindset. But this should be our attitude in all of our giving. I'm giving because I want to honor God in this area of yes. my life. Yes. Let me help you out. This doesn't just refer to money. When you're giving your time, when you're giving your effort, yes. when you're giving your talent, it is your attitude that counts because sometimes I don't be wanting to help a folks when I see their countenance and their spirit is off. Am I right? You say, listen, that heart and that attitude that you have behind this giving is going to cancel the act out. And so we want to make sure, even when we're giving our money, giving our time, giving our talents and our abilities in the church, in our, with our family, on our jobs, with our friends and our other parts of our life, we have to make sure that we are honoring the word of God because yes. that's where he commands the blessing. My he commands the blessing to the attitude, not the act of giving itself. My God. We have to be sure that we take the scripture and form this minister, Frederick. Amen. Because if that's the case, I can give with a grudging heart, I can give with unforgiveness in my heart, I gave a thousand dollars. So if he's always just going to bless the act, then listen, then that means some other parts of his word ain't true. And so I come to tell you, be mindful of your giving because the blessing is not commit, commanded to the action. The blessing is commanded to the attitude and the spirit in which you give. Because that's the measure that's going to be needed back to you. With the attitude and with the spirit that you give from. Now, 2 Corinthians 9, 7. For God loves a cheerful giver. Your attitude does matter as it relates to your giving. You cannot, hear this, you cannot unlock supernatural doors or receive supernatural demonstrations in your life when you don't give cheerfully. Why? Because the Bible reassures us that God loves a cheerful giver, which tells me he is repulsed when we give grudgingly or reluctantly. And so I admonish you as you go throughout this year, consistently evaluate your attitude and your heart when it comes time for you to give in general, but especially as it relates to the house of God and the things of God. As your attitude, hear this, as your attitude and your heart lines up with this topic of godly giving, you are going to witness things happening that it should have happened a long time ago because God commands the blessing to cheerful givers. When your attitude, when your, 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 your motivations, your disposition behind your giving lines up to the biblical precepts, I'm telling you, challenge yourself, ask the Holy Ghost to show you. And when you align those areas, I'm telling you, think. God redeems time. Time doesn't change for nobody. So when you mess up time, you lost it. But God knows how to speed things up, Carla. He knows things you should have had, Brother Eddie, three and four and five and ten years ago. As you get yourself into alignment, have things ever happened? Let me ask y'all something, Facebook family. Have things happened? Y'all know how we always talk about the best of all ministers, one thing after another. But let's be honest. Have we ever had some time where it was so much good stuff happening? I'm talking about like daily and weekly was like boom, 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 boom. Come on now. That's because at some point you got into alignment and some of that stuff was stuff you should have had way long before and when you got into alignment with your attitude and your way of living, God commanded the blessing and redeemed the time for you. Yes. Oh, that's going to happen some more this yes. year. Things are going to happen. We talk about the bad. No, we're leaving that out. The good stuff. Blessings, things going to happen so fast your head is going to swim. Yes. Not, guess what? And it's just because you can go and say, okay, I see why I didn't got all these debt cancellation notices. I didn't got this opportunity here, this business opportunity. I didn't took possession of that property. I didn't did this. I didn't did. I, I, I didn't got into alignment somewhere. It ain't for you to try to figure out. Just go ahead and say, God, thank you for getting me, helping me get back into alignment. Because you'll know when you're in the line with things because you'll say, wow. Because I ain't going to lie. Sometimes I pray, I say, God, help me to be a good steward and to manage and hold on to what you give me. Because sometimes things have happened so fast and I became a little frustrated. I said, okay, now that's too much. God said, but you prayed for this. Uh -huh. And so when you pray for the overflow, let me help y'all out. You need to pray for the ability to handle the overflow and to steward over the overflow. 
Some of us are not prepared because, Brother Glenn, we think it's not coming. But I'm telling you, according to the Bible, it's coming. Line yourself back up, and you can expect this to happen this year. Don't be caught slipping. Do what God is telling Like what he told Peter. He said, throw out your nets, Alexa. He said nets, plural, with an S on it. Peter said, okay, well, we've been doing this all night and we ain't caught them, but nevertheless, at your word, I'll let down the net. And he did. Jesus didn't say net. He said net. And guess what happened? The catch was so great, the net began to break and they were almost losing their product. And then he had to come and ask other folks to come and help the other folks that was around. And we can look at that two ways, but for the sake of this lesson, when it comes to obeying God, you better do exactly what he's telling you to do. Because I ain't got to worry about coming up short of missing nothing that he has for me if I do what he's telling me to do. Now, let's go to Malachi chapter 3, verse 10 through 12. Are we being helped by this teaching? I don't understand the good hoopla message for Sunday morning, but I promise you, when you see the fruit that this is going to produce starting this week and going forward, it's like, ah. We need some more of that Bible teaching. Yes. Because then when things don't happen as fast as you think it should, then you already know, hey, I can only get what the Bible says I can have when it says I can have it. So don't grow weary in your will of doing for it in due season. So you have to understand there is a due season, a, a, a commanded time for the blessings to unravel in your life. Malachi chapter 3, verses 10 through 12, it says, Bring the full tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. And thereby put me to the test, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and for you and pour down for you a blessing until there is no more need. I will rebuke the devourer for you yes. so that it will not destroy the fruit of your soil and your vine in the field shall not fare to bear, bear says the Lord of hosts. Verse 12, that all nations will call you blessed. For you will be a land of delight, says the Lord of hosts. This scripture identifies a full tithe, which is 10% of your income. It mentions the storehouse, which signifies the house of God. I'm just trying to give you a biblical-based teaching. The church, that's what the house of God refers to, the church, the storehouse. When he said, bring the full tithe that there may be food in my house, he means to give so that every need of the church will be met so that we can prevent the church from lacking. Catch this. When the church lacks, it cannot truly fulfill the call of God to help hurting people and impact the society in which we dwell. Amen. Does that make sense? Yes. This is why the Bible, God does nothing in this earth without us. This is why he depends on us. To, to, to approach our giving the way that we ought to approach it so that we don't leave his house lacking. This is why he says, prove me. He said, bring this stuff into the storehouse so it can be food in my house, meaning I don't want my house. God doesn't want his church, the body, to be lacking. Yes. And so he challenges you because God don't need it, but it's the principle behind it. Now, this is the only place in scripture, check this out though. Y'all know you ain't never heard what God told you, Minister Freddie, to test him and try him. Have you? This is the only, Eddie, do you see this? He, he, listen, but in this scripture he says, put me to the test. Uh -huh. See if what I'm telling you is true. No, in fact, it is true. When you put me to the test, he then goes on to say, I'm going to pour you out a blessing until there is no more need. My God. I'm going to rebuke the devourer for yes. your sake. Thank you, Jesus. He's telling, he's giving you permission. Uh -huh. Put him to the test of your giving. Bring your full time and your offering into the storehouse. Y'all, I will not promise you anything the Bible doesn't say. When you take care, when you take care of God's business, he does always take care of yours. Yes. When you meet the co conditions, condition of giving at the, as the scripture challenges, it doesn't just leave us hanging. Promises follow. Again, the windows of heaven being open. I'm going to get this in y'all's spirit because it's in the word. The windows of heaven will be open to you. Us receiving a blessing till there is no more room that we can receive yes. it. He then promises that if you meet this condition of giving, he's going to rebuke Facebook family. 
when you meet this condition of giving as he out, he doesn't just release the promises without condition, y'all. When you meet the condition of giving, bringing the full tithe into the storehouse, this is how he can command the blessing to yes. you. He said, I'm going to rebuke the devourer for your sake. This does not mean the devil won't try you. My, my. This does not mean that unfortunate situations won't occur. Uh -huh. But this does mean that God will never forget your giving and will cause deliverance to hit your life when those times do come. Uh -huh. my, my. As we line up with regards to this principle of giving called tithing, Based on scripture, we can expect to receive supernatural demonstrations in the way this scripture identifies. All I'm saying is, try God. Try God. Come on, try. You know what I'm saying? Try Jesus, try me. Yeah, try him. He's, <laughs> he's telling you, this is the only scripture you're going to find in the Bible where he says, put me to the test. Yes. Try me. I want you to see that what I'm telling you is true. Try me. We try everything else, so why don't we try God's word? Yes. We try everything, and why don't we try God's word? Hallelujah. And He's not saying try me to see if this don't work. He said just do it and watch it work for you. Yes. Now let's go to First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse three. I'm just about done. First Corinthians chapter thirteen, verse three. If I give away all that I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. I'm going to say this again. It's not that God commands the blessing to the act of giving. Uh -huh. He commands it to the mindset and the attitude that's behind your giving. So sometimes we wait for things that's not going to happen for us because we planted seeds grudgingly and in an angry manner because, oh man, they asking for $150 again. I'm go ahead and just do it. No. And so this is why we want to realign ourselves mm -hmm. because you can, you can go back and rehearse it. Oh, okay, God, I know you command the blessing to the attitude and the heart behind my giving. So help my giving. Even if it ain't currently where it's supposed to be, you ask God, help me. Come in right now. Cleanse my heart. Help me to give in a way that honors you because otherwise you're just losing money. That's right. Y'all know what that's like, Brother Glenn? That's just like if you just lose $20. I done lost money before and it's a bad thing. I hate losing $2. Too. Let alone $20, Carly. You know what I'm saying? But when we give without the right mindset and the attitude that God will be pleased with, that's just like you're just throwing money away or you just lost it. My God. Hmm. Love Check this out. This is House of Love. Uh -huh. Our scripture, foundation of scripture is 1 John chapter 4, verse 7. Yes. It's all about love. Love is the foundation upon which all of the kingdom of God operates and functions. Y'all hear me? Love is the fuel behind everything in the kingdom, including giving. Where there is no love, hear this, there is no kingdom of God. I'm going to say that one more time. Where love does not dwell, uh -huh. you will not find the kingdom of God. Come on now. Now. How do I want to take this? I got a couple of good points that I want to <laughs> go ahead and end with. Just give me like three more minutes. Now, our giving is no different. If love for God, hear this. Love for others is ultimately not at the foundation of why you give, then your giving indeed is in vain. Wow. And when you say you love God, it's going to be displayed not from your words, but through your actions. And guess what? A lot of times the hardest part or the hardest area to show God that we really honor him is really in our giving a lot of times. Because it's so easy to go spend money on clothing and, and, and the pleasurable things in life. And I'm not saying that you work hard, you should be able to spend money, but my whole thing is, like I challenge myself on, I can't give God any less. Why do I give myself more than I give to God? And it's not that God particularly needs your money, he's challenging you to bring it into his storehouse. Because he don't have a need. But he knows his house and 
the leaders and the things that he's called the ministries to do that it operates off of money. Y'all know the, the, the church don't operate off the favor of God. Come on now. It offer, operates off of money. money. Now the favor of God can produce some money. But you can't go there and say, uh, you know what, Marriott, I'm going to pay this rent today with the favor of God. They're going to say, is it green? But prayerfully after hearing this word, you will let the word of God sink deep into the root of your heart and will begin cheerfully obeying his word as it relates to your giving. The definition of insanity is continuing to do the same thing over and over and over again, but expecting different results. I, I'm speaking from experience, y'all. I've tried this. There was a, I stayed at a certain level of giving for a good portion of the time. I said, man, I need, I need God. I need you to do this. And he challenged, constantly challenging me to come up, Minister Frederick. But I just kept it at that level that it was on for so long. I'm like, man. I see things unlocking, and sometimes, you know, you look around like, man, what's going on? Like, what's happening? Man? And then God said, number one, keep your, keep your eyes in your own life. Mm -hmm. Quit looking at somebody else's life. Mm -hmm. That's what he first told me. And then he said, remember how I've been challenging you to come up in your giving, and you persist on giving at this level? He said, listen, this is what he told me, and then sent me back to the, his word, that certain things you need me to do, I don't care how much you fast. Mm -hmm. Yes, you've been fasting, and thank you for that, because it puts you closer to me. You've, you've been turned over that plate. You've been in your word. But he said, you couldn't have been in your word so much because your giving is not still at the level. My, my. And so I said, oh, this is how God talks to me. I don't know how he talks to you. But this is how he talks to me. And when I took him up on that, and he pointed me back to Malachi, he said, try me. He said, can you afford not to give at a greater oh, level? Because God. I was telling him, at a feature, I said, I, but God, you know, I only got this same check coming. I got the same... He said, what are you asking me to do for you? My. Go back and look at your prayer list. He said, can you really afford not to elevate your giving? My God. This is what he told me. When I did, I'm telling you, it changed the trajectory of my life. Again, I'm only speaking the Bible. Challenges still came, but the blessing that came after those challenges, it blew my mind when I elevated. And so I just kept elevating and kept elevating. Listen, I give over my tithes. Uh -huh. Give over my offering. And this is my way of honoring God because I said, okay, God, the more, because again, my whole thing is, if we're expecting God, our expectation is so, all of us got high expectation in here for something. Am I right? Yes, yes. And so our, our, our desire to give to God must be matched to that expectation that we have for him to do something for us. Again, no, we can't be God's giving. But at the same time, he challenges us on effort. Effort. Yes. Go back and let the spirit evaluate your heart behind giving. Keep doing. Keep praying. Keep seeking God. Keep being faithful to yes. God. But some of us, until we come up in our giving, I'm, and listen, when I tell you, it's something my spiritual father challenged me on. I had no faith in this area, but I said, I'm going to obey because I just believe he's speaking from the word of God, so I'm going to obey. Because before, because my tithe goes to my spiritual father as my covenant. Mm -hmm. But Pastor Johnson gives much offering here. Even when I get extra money and things I'll be going to spend on me and my wife, I'll be telling everybody, house of love, I want to spend this $200. But that's okay. God still takes care of me. But before though, I was tithing there, I was keeping the money and putting it in the account here. Let's be honest. I'm, I'm just telling you. Mm -hmm. So that, because I'm like, we're, we're a new church. Mm -hmm. we're, we're trying to get up and going. There's things we need. Mm -hmm. And there was nobody coming at that time really. Uh -huh. And so he asked me one day. He said, son, he said, where are you tithing to? I said, Hold on, go on, Mr. What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> he said, he said, sir. He said, son, where you tithing to? I said, well, I'm putting it in the church account. I said, you know we do. He said, son. He said, you can't be eating off your own seat. He said, and I'm not saying you're doing, he said, because I know you're a person who's been taken. He said, but you ought to be tithing to the one 
that's watching over your ministry and watching over your soul for you. He said, now you give your offer to your ministry. He said, be, he said in fact, he said, you have to listen to me. He said, I'm, 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 he said, I'm giving you what the word says. He said, but my, my spiritual father, he's not. So he said, you know, check this out. It's all good. If you want to do it, you're going to get the blessing. And if you don't, you ain't going to get it. Easy. What else you want to talk about? And so I said, you know what? I said, I don't agree with you. You know I'm growing and I believe my child need to be put in the house of love. I said, but nevertheless, I said, I'm going to obey. I said, because I know you're telling me. I'm and you begin to give me biblical principles. And when I tell y'all, I'm not, yeah. listen. When I tell you, like, like things, like money, like out of nowhere things to allow us to get this and to leave that home so we can come have church here. Now this costs a pretty penny to be having church here, yeah. but God has provided a way. And so many different methods and means from people that I'm like, okay, who are you? I don't even know. People just cash up, just blinging. Boom, boom, boom. Because of the works. They said, no, you put this in the church account. Because if you give everything to outreach, you ain't going to have nothing in the church to build for when God's trying to move you to another place. So people begin to give for the outreach. They said, but this is for the church. So you can get the things you need. And so this is why, like this costs some thousands. But because I don't want us I want us to behave like we already were. We want to be. Come on now. Just because you're small, you don't have to act small. Come on now. But because, and I use that story as I said, I'm going to trust what you're saying because you're not telling me anything outside the word. Yes. And when I did that, even though in my my rationale thinking, Glenn, I said, no, nah, man. I said, I don't agree with you. I said, but apostle, I said, I want to honor you. And, and, uh, and obey what you're saying because I know you're telling me from the word. And listen, I'm telling you, like literally, oh, oh, my boom, my. just like, oh man, something over here, something over here, something over here, something over here. Listen, so much so, when we went, Elifisha was with us, Carla, you was with us, Ernie, you was with us, we went to Ohio, they paid the first month's rent here yes. at this yes. place. Yes, yes. That's the type of stuff. I wasn't expecting that. Yes, amen. Yes. Hey, guess what? Let me help y'all out too. Y'all know another reason why we extra blessed? Hallelujah. And it, don't let bodies fool you. That has nothing to do with the impact right, of ministry. That's right. You don't know another reason? House of love tithes. Yes. House of love tithes. Like there was a tithe that's given from our money. Like Pastor Johnson tithe. That's my personal because I work. All right. Yeah, I got a full-time job. <laughs> but house of love also ties. And so God said, I'm going to always command a blessing for you and your house, and I'm going to command a blessing for my house. And he said, you don't have to worry about nothing. He said, because house of love doesn't belong to you. It belongs to me. And I'm going to command a blessing where there is obedience. And so listen, you have to just trust what's being said because it's coming from the word of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Everybody stand to your feet. Amen. 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 Good word, Pastor. Everybody stand to your feet. Yes. Once we listen, I'm trying to, I want the whole body. Brooklyn, the whole body. What, what good is it for the, the legs and the ankles, Carla, or the hips to be successful, and then the neck and the shoulders are falling by the wayside and struggling. You get what I'm saying, Alex? We want the whole body. Because guess what happens? Like when your ankle is torn or your foot, your other parts of your body can be good, but it puts a little weight on you. You're limping and stuff like that. You get what I'm saying? And so figuratively speaking, it's my desire for us all to be documented proof. And this is not just a spiritual thing, y'all. This is as it relates to your money, your school, your kingdom person, our educational pursuits, our business ventures, uh, goals and aspirations that you have in life. Mm -hmm. God wants to make us documented proof. Yes. So let me, I want to pray, but let me play me a little tune. Can we give God some praise just for the word of God? Father, we thank you right now for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. Father, we thank you because you're God that sits high and looks down low. Father, we thank you that it's in you that we live, move, and have our being. We thank you for the word that has come forth on today, God. 
Father, we thank you. We ask right now that you help our hearts to be realigned according to your word as it relates to our giving, God. Amen. Search us and know our ways. Try us and know our thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in us. And we ask that you lead us into the path of everlasting life. Oh, that you will bless us indeed and enlarge our territories, that your hand will be with us and that you will keep us from evil, that we may not cause pain. Father, we ask that you forgive us for any selfishness, God, shortchanging you in our giving, God, in our mindset of giving, our attitude of giving, our heart posture of giving. Father, help us to try you like your word says, to put you to the test. That if you will not open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that we won't have room enough to receive. You said you rebuked the devourer for our sake. And all nations of the earth shall call us blessed. And so, Father, I speak as we come into alignment, God, in our attitudes, in our hearts, God, in our mindsets behind our giving, God. That as those things line up, then, Father, you're going to cause time to be redeemed for us. And things are going to begin to track us down that we should have been had, God. We command the blessing right now of Amos 9. Chapter 9, verses 12 through 15, which says, Everywhere we look, it's going to be blessings. Things are happening so fast our head is going to swim, God. And Father, I commission that to be so starting today, God. As we honor you, God. As we prioritize you, God. As we abstain from stinginess. As we keep you in the proper place, God. Your word declares where our treasure is, there will our heart be also. So, Father, help our hearts to match up, God, to what your heart is, God. And so, Lord, we just tell you thank you. And we praise you. And we're in a great expectation for this to be the year of the documented proof, God, where supernatural demonstrations are happening in our money, in our home, in our ministry, in our spiritual life, in our education, God, in our relationships, in our friendships, in our business ventures, everything that concerns us, God. We're standing on the word, God, that this, we are already documented proof because of what you did on the cross. But, Father, that we want things to manifest in this tangible flesh, God, so that we can utilize it here on the earth all for your glory. So, Lord, we thank you as we stand in great expectation, God, what we offer up to you, God. Let it be pleasing into your sight. And, Holy Ghost, we ask, help us to not give an offering like Cain gave, but help us to give the firstlings of our flock, just as Abel gave. And so, Lord, we take you thank you in advance that as we come back into a love of God, heart, mind, and through the act of giving, God, that the blessing is already going to be waiting for us. And so, Lord, we just tell you thank you and we praise you. And we be so careful to give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. So, everybody, this is that time where we're going to partake in our time of giving. So, does everyone have an envelope? Facebook family? Thank you all for tuning in today. Listen, this is a time where you can go ahead and uh, sow a seed as well. There are three ways you can give. One, you can give through Cash App. Our uh, Cash App handle is dollar sign, House of Love, F-L. That's dollar sign, House of Love, F-L. You can give through PayPal. That's House of Love, F-L, at Yahoo.com. You can also give through Zelle. The phone number is 954 648-8802 and also feel free if you want to send us a check we will gladly take it just make sure it doesn't bounce the address is 4846 North University Drive suite number 551 that's Lauder Hill, Florida 33351 we love you Facebook family go ahead and send your seed and please be sure that you send your prayer request to us by email at houseoflovefl at yahoo.com or you can send your prayer requests, but not just your prayer requests, your testimonies and your praise reports as well. You can also reach us on our website, houseofloveministriesfl.com, and you can utilize the contact form. So we will see you next Sunday at 1115, Facebook family. We love you. Have a blessed and a wonderful day. So at this time.